Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome him now. He's senior writer for Fangraphs and ESPN contributor. He is the one in whenever he's ready to come on in. <laughs> he's in. He's in on audio. I'm already he's here. He's in on audio. He's in on audio. You fooled me, Dan. How you doing, man? I- I'm doing well. I still haven't replaced my camera, so you only hear my disembodied voice. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, I do a I do a re- speedy notice. He produces my wrestling show on Fridays. I mean, remember we had Kevin Castle. I think he did audio every single time when he was on with us. So we're used to the audio thing. But before we begin, Dan, how are you doing? How's your family doing with the, the, the COVID situation and everything like that, first and foremost? Uh, I'm doing well. We're all doing well. Everybody's healthy and alive. I did have COVID uh, on my birthday last month. Uh, I was I was actually pretty sick for like three or four days, and then I got better. A lot of stuffiness still, but I mean, I'm pretty much over all that. But I would not recommend it uh, to anyone given the choice. <laughs> Wouldn't order again. <laughs> No, I definitely would not. I know a ton of people that have gotten it for sure. My wife had it, actually. Um, so she, because I had my eight-month-old at home, she had to leave the house completely. So I, I had to watch the baby for a week without her. It was, it was not easy for sure. And, or that, but, but let's get into the baseball talk, Dan. There's a lot going on right now. Obviously, we have the trade deadline coming up. And I know Speedy was telling me uh, you have a lot of information also about the Hall of Fame, which I am ecstatic to talk about because I've had so many conversations about that. But let's get into the trade deadline first. Obviously, the Yankees lose last night to the Mets right after the game is over. Snap of a finger. Andrew Benintendi, you are a New York Yankee because we're not going to have what happened the last few days where we can't hit the baseball when we're 0 for 15 and with runners in scoring position. What were your thoughts on the Andrew Benatendi trade, and what else do you see the Yankees doing? I I think it was necessary. Obvious, obviously, Juan Soto is kind of the favorite acquisition of everybody for good reason. Uh, but I think if you're going, getting a short-term outfielder, one who you do not have to pay a lot for, because you get Benintendi for a cheaper price simply because, unlike Brian Reynolds, unlike Ramon Mariano, he's, he's a free agent at the end of the season. So the Royals did not demand all that much. They got a couple, you know, some interesting arms, but no one the Yankees were thinking, oh, my God, we can't give up that guy. Uh, so he, he fits a role. Uh, the team kind of needs certainty. They can't wait around any longer for Joey Gallo to hit. Uh, he feels like he's going to be gone in the next couple of days, either to another team or eventually, you know, possibly even a DFA if, if, if nobody takes him. Uh, I imagine someone will take a gamble on him. But he, he's a good on-base guy, makes good contact. He can play the field you know, at a level where you're not worrying about him being a DH. I, I think it's a good move. Uh, and... We'll see about if he can play in Toronto in a possible postseason. But even if he can, it's still probably better than, say, getting David Peralta or Stephen Piscotti or, or, or guys like that. So I think it is a good trade for the Yankees. Now, we've heard a lot with the – with I want to go to the Soto – with the many scenarios of they want to include Corbin's contract or they want to include Strasburg's contract in that kind of particular deal. Do you think that restricts the teams to only certain teams, or do you think that could expand it if they want to trade less prospects? It certainly changes the, the pool of teams that could be interested. Uh, I think, obviously, you'll chase off some teams that aren't going to want a huge, you know, because, I mean, Corbin's owed more than $60 million, and uh, Strasburg is a, is a big question mark and owed quite a bit of money. And I think you end up essentially diluting your package of, of what you get in return by making people take these poisonous deals. It's like saying, oh, I'll get a great deal in my house, but you have to assume payments on my car and everything. It's like, oh, but I don't want your car. Why? I, you have a Mercury Topaz. I like to bring that car up as a bad car. Uh, I think, but for a team that doesn't have a lot of great prospects, I think that it would make it more interesting simply because they can actually pay in money instead of prospects. Uh, I think a team, they wouldn't do it, obviously, because of the ownership. But the White Sox, theoretically, with a very weak farm system, if they paid for Strasburg and Corbin, they they might be able to even swing something for Soto. They won't do that, of course, because I can't imagine Jerry Reinsdorf would green light that. But I think teams like, like maybe the Giants, who don't have the deepest farm system, could get into it because of the ability to buy players. Uh, I don't know if the Nationals should make it a demand, though. I think that it should be organization to organization, give some organizations with, with great prospects the ability to kind of buy them with prospects, give the teams that don't the ability to buy them with money. You get more bidders that way. Uh, but we'll see what happens. 
I always find it, and it's before I get to my question, Dan. I always find it interesting is that everybody always talks about how they want the quantity amount of prospects, and I always say to them, it's not about the quantity, about it. it's the quality of the prospects you get back. I'd rather have two of the top. 15 best prospects in baseball then just get like five or six mid to kind of higher prospects but on the lower number i'd rather get two of the best ones but that's just my my opinion on that i want to get into the angels uh they suck <laughs> <laughs> they they it's interesting uh bleacher report just said they came out with a post draft farm system ranking they finished last in that in the farm system. <laughs> They're in last place now. Mike Trout has a serious back issue that's going to need a lot of time, and we don't know how healthy he's ever going to be again, if he ever will be. They have Anthony Rendon's contract, which is egregious. They signed Noah Syndergaard to a contract and lost a draft pick that was very valuable to them for whatever reason they did that. And I know they're not going to do it, Dan. And I know Speedy knows it too. But you have to listen for Shohei Otani offers, don't you? You gotta rebuild this team at this point. If you're not winning with Otani and Trout and these guys, and your farm system is dead last in baseball, you gotta fix that. I'm totally with you. I think Angels fans would riot. They're not even like competitive with yeah. Otani and Trout, and that's that that's such a frustrating thing. It's like saying you're like you're like you're going out for like a a a, a hundred meter race against people and they give you like a three second head start and you're allowed to use rollerblades that's like kind of what it is when you start with otani and trout and then you still lose the race yeah because the angels would fall over with the rollerblades yeah <laughs> it's like you essentially start with with you know in in a good season the player has been the most valuable player in baseball over the last decade an actual two-way player who is good at both pitching and hitting and they're not just not competitive, but they're probably not going to finish at 500 this year. And I don't know how they get better because they're not going to spend their way into con in contention. They'll make the occasional big signing, but they won't really do that much. They won't go over the, the, the luxury tax threshold. You don't have prospects to trade for players. Like, what is the plan to get better? Uh, and I don't think they have any plan to get better unless they really just rebuild uh, as 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 awful as it would be to trade Otani. Uh, I mean, if I was an Orioles fan and they traded Ripken in 91, I would have been pretty depressed about that. But from a logical standpoint, I mean, where how did they become a good team? I don't see the path. It's really quick before Speedy goes, I mean, you're right. It goes to the point of the fact that Mike Trout's been in the playoffs once in his career. He's the best player in baseball. He got to the playoffs in 2014. He got swept in the first round. It's embarrassing. I mean, it doesn't. It, it, it it's mind-boggling to me. That's not how you build the game when your best player only makes the sports. But Speedy, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna comment on that with Mike Trout, especially now with this back condition, which is very rare. He thinks he could keep playing, but at what type of level? So, what do you? How do you think he will come back when he does? As in terms of his ceiling, and how do you think that could affect a potential trade value if the Angels do decide to trade him? Uh, I, I think uh, the back injury is serious. I think you have to see how it develops. Uh, I mean, there, there's reasons for optimism. He's a very highly trained athlete. He's going to have the best medical care. Uh, but the question is, is what happens if Mike Trout spends the last decade of his career as a part-time DH? That's so depressing. I think at a minimum, you probably shouldn't consider him kind of a center fielder anymore. I think I would probably want him out on the field as little as possible just to mitigate that risk. I think it's a lot safer to have him batting, you know, four times a game, occasionally running the bases, than being out there running every pitch, especially in, in center field. Uh, if he had the choice to run into a wall and catch a, a, a fly ball with that injury, I'd want him not to. It's like, no, let the ball drop. <laughs> we, we need you. We need your back. Uh, but maybe he'll be healthy. Maybe we'll have some fortune there. But, I mean, he's broken down a few times in recent years with injury problems. And he wouldn't be the first really great player to break down in his 30s. Uh, but, you know, I'd prefer not to see him have Ken Griffey Jr.'s 30s. No oh, God. I, I, I want to get into a team that's very much on the fringe, and I have I don't think anybody, Dan, and I don't know if you'll know either, knows what they're going to do, and that is the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. I have no idea what they're doing. Like, do you trade Bogarts knowing that he might leave as a free agent? Because and also, if 
if this is the package that Ben Attendee got back from the Yankees, I don't think J.D. Martinez is going to cost anything more than that either. Yeah, I think the key, uh, and frustrating for a writer because it's a very internal thing, I think the key decision is how likely Xander Bogarts is to opt out of his contract. That's kind of the thing that, that overrides everything. Uh, I don't think he's said anything about it yet. Uh, I, I could be wrong, but... I don't I'd be think you... if he takes the option, Dan. I, I would be surprised. Uh, yeah. So, so I mean, that's that that that's the key that that kind of triggers things. If if he's going to be a free agent and you know that, then all of a sudden it does make sense to retool somewhat uh, because you you want to look towards the future. I think though, if you were more confident or they came to an agreement on a modified contract or an extension, maybe you do try to go for it a little more uh, this season. Uh, but really, except for him, I mean, there's there's not a lot they really have of trade value. Because as you say, J.D. Martinez, he's a D.H. outfielder-ish player sometimes. Who, I mean, he's not signed very long. It, 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 he's, a rent, he's a very short-term rental. They only get a few names back. So unless they're sure that they're not getting Bogarts back and they completely fall out of the the wild card race. I think they'll probably not sell, but if they do have like a bad run the next few days, even, you know, two or three additional losses in a row could change it. I think, I, I, I think they're very much on the fence about what they're going to do. But again, I, I, I don't know the thinking of them on this specific issue. So uh, going back to the Red Sox and the White Sox, probably the only two teams that maybe are kind of surprises. We've seen throughout baseball it seem pretty conventional for the most part. Not a lot of surprise teams beyond that. Um, do you think that kind of thing affects this trade deadline in terms of being less aggressive, maybe more aggressive, that there isn't that surprise team that maybe or a surprise player that could be available? I think uh, it, it, it really depends on how – I think the Yankees and Astros probably aren't going to make any all-in moves to to make short-term improvements, simply because you look at baseball's playoff structure, and they're almost certainly going to get first-round buys this year. Uh, I, the chances that the AL Central leader passes one of them is, is really unlikely, I, I think. Uh, and in the AL Central, there's kind of this, this three-way battle, and... No matter what team wins, they're probably going to have to have a first round match. So winning the division is as good as winning the wild card. So as as long as they're wild card relevant, uh, I think the AL Central teams do have uh, motivation to be aggressive. Uh, I think the biggest problem is I don't think any of the AL Central teams are motivated financially to be aggressive. And that, you know, kind of limits their options, especially if Corbin is included in a thing. There won't be any surprise Soto trade to one of those teams like there was the Carlos Correa signing with the Twins. Uh, I do think they're probably in competition for uh, either Louis Castillo or Frankie Montes or possibly even both. Uh, I think that's where this AL Central trade deadline is going to go. Uh, but I don't think any of the three teams are really that interested in picking up big financial commitments that could make kind of a blockbuster deal work. 